everyone. My name is Daya Raman, and like Dr. Freed said, um, the title of my talk is Drugs, Money, and Waste, The Truth About Expired Medications. So how this story starts for me is really, I get a call from my mom, and she probably you know, went into her medicine cabinet, picked up a medication to take for a migraine, um, or a headache or whatnot, and um, later decides that the medication that she wanted to take was expired two years ago. And then she proceeds to have a little bit of a meltdown, realizing that the medication that she had taken it had actually expired two years ago, and she's calling frantically, worried about what's going to happen to her. Um, so I didn't really know what to tell her, to be honest. So then I needed to kind of do my own research into the subject. And just looking at mainstream news media, there's plenty of um, news about medications and whether effect they're effective and whether you can use expired medication. So it, as you can see here, um, are these dates, these dates are often meaningless. Um, do they really even mean anything and um, anything or everything? So that's kind of the main premise of this talk is really to understand whether medications can be used past their expiration date. So just some background on the topic. In 1979, the FDA required pharmaceutical companies to provide proof that a medication is stable over the use of months. And that is actually when expiration dates originated on medication bottles. And a relevant part of um, this discussion is really to understand that one in four people struggle to afford medication prescriptions, and really not much is being done to change the costs. And yet more than a billion dollars of prescription drugs are destroyed every year by hospitals and nursing homes because of simply just because of a tiny date on a package. And in addition um, to hospitals, nursing homes nationwide flush or burn or discard these medications. And actually this picture that you can see here is a picture of boxes of medications that are being thrown into an incinerator to get rid of. And this is a treatment plant in Baltimore. So with this in mind, um, there's been really a growing debate as to whether expiration dates really matter. The ICH, which is kind of this body called the International Council for Harmonization, they're a group that brings together regulatory authorities and pharmaceutical companies to really review um, drug product de development. So the ICH has come up with this term called shelf life, which I'll be you'll be hearing about more throughout this talk as the time period which a drug is expected to remain um, within the approved shelf life specification, provided it is stored under conditions defined on the container label. And storage conditions that are taken into account are temperature, humidity, um, the packing, and any type of light exposure. And the shelf life for most medications is anywhere from 12 months to 60 months post-production. And it's important to know, um, as noted even by the FDA pharmacists, that expiration dates are often based on marketing. And this allows pharmaceutical companies to arbitrarily establish dates without actual determination of stability beyond that date. So that means to say a pharmaceutical company can do drug testing on a medication, determine that the medication can be used up to 12 months, and they just write that as the date for expiration without doing any more data to check whether the medication can be used past that date. So this is from the FDA, which is the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and you can see here this is the, their code of the federal regulations, stating that expiration dates are needed to assure that a drug product meets applicable standards of identity, strength, quality, and purity. And according to the FDA, they actually admit to various expiration uh, dating extension, and the FDA requirement for manufacturers for drug product extension is really based on acceptable data from full long-term stability studies in just at least three um, pilot or production batches. So in 2006, um, in the Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, they published this article, The Stability Profiles of Drug Products Extended Beyond labeled expiration dates. And this was really on pushing from the American Medical Association, who concluded that actual shelf lives of some products are greater than their labeled expiration dates, and acknowledged that the best evidence to support this really resides in this shelf life extension program, also known as SLEP. So the SLEP study um, was a retrospective analysis that summarized extended drug product stability data 
and this data was collected um, by the FDA actually for the use of the Department of Defense and Strategic National Stockpile to maintain a so-called state of readiness. So this system allowed the extension of the function of shelf life of many products past their expiration date and was initiated to reduce high costs of replacing these stockpiles. So that means um, the government right now is basically holding many medications in a stockpile in a, in a warehouse somewhere and they're just extending the shelf life on various of these medications instead of turning them over. And through this program, the shelf life of several products has been extended on a lot by lot basis and has resulted in substantial savings for the military. So breaking down really the data from this study, um, you can see here they tested 122 uh, drug products and they batched them into five groups really for purposes of understanding the results. And in group one and two, there were medications in which all the lots were extended beyond their original expiration date. And I should also mention three, four, and five had the same extension in their expiration dates as well, um, but some were terminated a little more quickly and those medications were really liquid-based medications. Um, so to summarize further, out of 122 products from 3,005 lots, overall 2,650, so 88% of the 3,000 lots were extended past their original expiration date for an average of 66 <coughs> months. So that's five months and change, or sorry, five years and change. And of the 479 lots that had failed, no lots failed before one year, and 312 lots were extended beyond four years. So this is a table of a lot of the data from groups one and two, and you can see here these are, or may not be able to see well in the back, but these are a lot of medications that we use pretty frequently on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can see here, for example, sodium bicarb, which is um, on the bottom, it, the average extension in months is 55 months. That means to say we can be using this medication for a lot longer. This article here was written in 2017 in ProPublica, and it's an investigative online magazine which discussed the topic of the myth of drug expiration dates in a very compelling manner. And here, Lee Kentrell, he's a pharmacist and toxicologist, he helps run the California Poison Control System, and he stumbled on this box of medications that had been um, in a retail pharmacy in the back closet. Um, and these drugs were actually predated to the time of 1969, which extra trivia was the time of the moon landing. So himself and his colleague from UCSF, who was a chemist, really tried to answer the question whether any of these drugs were still potent. Little did I know, and as I just told you, the federal agencies are stockpiling drugs, including the military and the DOD and the Veterans Affairs, um, and they've long realized the savings in revisiting expiration dates. And all of this really came about in the late 80s when the Air Force was hoping to help save on replacement costs of various medications and they asked the FDA if certain drug expiration dates could be extended and that's really what started this shelf life extension program. So just to look at the numbers, so the DOD maintains about $13.6 billion worth of drugs in its stockpile and it said that in 2016, it cost $3.1 million to run the extension program, but it saved the department from replacing $2.1 billion in expired drugs. And to put the magnitude on that return investment in everyday plain language, that means they um, spent $1 to keep this program running, but in turn saved $677. So unlike the government, there's really no incentive for drug companies to extend shelf life of various drugs. So here, um, in a letter to the editor in 2012, this is where Lee Kentrell really kind of synthesized the results of the testing that he had done on those drugs. So he tested um, eight long expire, expired medications in this study. Three tablets of each medication were analyzed and tested three times for each labeled active ingredient. Um, so out of, he tested 12 of 14 compounds, and out of those 12, those were present in concentrations at least 90% of the labeled amounts, and that is generally considered um, the minimum acceptable potency. 12 of the 14 drugs retained full potency for at least 336 months, so that's 28 years, and of the eight um, of these for at least 480 months as well. So the FDA does, I should, 
um, say, permit any reasonable variation in marketing, such that medications are marketed to contain at least 90 to what they're calling 110% the amount of active ingredient that's claimed on the label. And given that Americans spend more than $300 billion annually in prescription medications, extending drug expiration dates could yield enormous healthcare expenditure savings. So this is a table of the data from this study, and you can see all medications are, cannot be hold, held together. Um, and I've highlighted aspirin here, and aspirin was one of the medications that did not kind of last through this testing. So the SLEP program is designed to defer and reduce replacement costs of federal stockpiles. However, local and state governments are not permitted to rotate stocks. And one medication in particular is actually Tamiflu. So according to the SLEP data, um, Tamiflu has a shelf life of at least seven years. However, that only applies to government purchase bottles, not those that are purchased in stockpiles by businesses or other entities like the hospital, for example. The DOD also reported that through um, the SLEP data, they could potentially extend um, and add an average of 10 years to the shelf life of ciprofloxacin, which the government um, you know, has kept for stockpile purposes um, for biowarfare. So you could actually extend the shelf life of Cipro from what they're saying for at least 13 years. And how local governments are really trying to address this is actually an example of this is in Baltimore, where they've taken steps to maximize the shelf life by requiring their vendors to deliver drugs, um, for, in particular for Cipro, to be held for, um, to have an expiration date that will last three years. So um, this article was interesting. It was published in Annals of Emergency Medicine in 2018, and it outlines some difficulties that providers have had in the past and in the hospital with expired medications um, and and limited supplies of medications, I should say. So in particular, we've had shortages in 2018 of sodium bicarb, calcium gluconate, atropine, epi, um, and this was particularly frustrating to physicians because some of, some of these um, things, for example, like sodium bicarb or 50% uh, dextrose, you would think that that would be um, something that you would readily get at a supermarket, for example, um, or contents of which could be from a supermarket. So um, that's when hospitals started calling the FDA and providers started calling the FDA. And their solution at that point for the shortage was just to extend the expiration date of a number of lots that were already in the marketplace. So for example, if a medication was supposed to be expired on January 1st, 2020, they just said, go ahead, keep the medication for another six months and you don't have to replace it. So the question really is, if it's that easy to extend the expiration date in a crisis situation, why not extend them in the first place um, when drugs are initially approved? So it really does just seem to make sense to me. And as the title of this article published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings discusses the implications to really the environment about medical waste. Um, and extending shelf lives could have even a positive impact on the environment. And scientists have been finding evidence of contamination of many medications and um, waste in water, which is causing sediment, and that can cause a potential ecological risk as well. And their solution is really to require um, companies to complete long-term stability testing, just as um, pharmaceutical companies conduct ongoing monitoring for adverse effects um, when they release a new medication. So taking a look now at a medication that is most vital to survival for some are EpiPens, um, which is really, which you know often need to re be replaced every one to two years just based on expiration dates. And given cost, this might be difficult for patients and you might just forget that you have to replace your EpiPen. Um, so these are three studies I've listed here um, that look at the potency of EpiPens after their expiration date. They've looked at various time sequences, one to 50 months past expiration or three months to 36 months. What they found here is that a large majority of the tested subsets actually contained at least greater than 80% of the fully labeled dose of epinephrine. So this isn't to say that you know these life-saving medications should not be replaced periodically. That's by no means what I'm saying. Um, but it's really that if you are caught in a pinch and that's what, what you have available, 
it's really better than nothing, and it does have the propensity with proper conditions to, loss, to last well beyond its expiration date. And really thinking about other ways to deal with medication waste, um, this looks like this um, study looked at an approach for medication recycling. And um, an example of this is really um, Aid for AIDS, which is a nonprofit group in Manhattan. And they actually collect medications after um, patients, HIV patients in particular, either switch their prescriptions, stop their medications, or worse, die. And they collect these medications, send it to a local pharmacy, they analyze the medications, and then try to distribute these medications out um, to those who can't afford them. So a big question in your mind probably is, are there any adverse reactions to expired medications? And the short answer is no. Um, there was a case report that I did find in JAMA in 1963, and it's a case of renal tubular damage, and it was caused by an expired prescription of the antibiotic tetracycline. And that was thought to be caused by a chemical transformation of the active ingredient. ingredient. Um, but I really could not find any other case reports that really outlined any adverse outcomes for, from usage of expired medications, and especially those listed in the um, SLEPT inventories. So my recommendations for you all is, um, you know, try to keep the tablets in the original packaging and really avoid redistribution. So I see a lot of people carrying around, you know, medications in little plastic bags, and that's probably not the best um, for shelf life purposes. Try to store them at room temperature. Um, avoid any extra heat or cold temperatures. And finally, it's really a shame to throw away good drugs and medications that could last a lot longer. And these are my references. And this is my myth. Um, so is it a myth? Using medications beyond their expiration date is not safe and rarely effective and should not be done. All right. <clears throat> that was great. Um, clearly, we have a, a lot of waste in our medical system, which we all know. Uh, but this is a classic example of a lot of waste that's really mainly benefiting pharmaceutical companies, I think, more than anybody else. Um, <clears throat> I think I've been at Joint Commission um, surveys where they've actually cited the hospital for having you know, uh, medication in a acidose or whatever that's literally one day over the expiration date. One day. Um, and there are plenty of other things besides medications that we do the same for uh, medical devices, catheters and things all expire. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of waste. And unfortunately, um, you'd say, you know, give it to direct relief and they can send it to other countries. They won't use it. They won't take them. So um, I think it's a great program that the government has. It's too bad it hasn't extended it to the rest of the, the world or the rest of the country aside from the Department of Defense. So that's my personal thought on it. Anybody else have any thoughts or questions? Comments? Would everybody be willing to sign a petition saying that they have to put the date that the DOD uses? As an alternative date, would we all sign a petition would. to our Congress person and our senators and say this is an easy way to save billions of dollars in the healthcare system? I'd sign it. Anybody well, else? I would. Yeah. Okay, we got two. Sure. <laughs> Dea, you can write I know. it up. I'm like, I'll do that in my free time. It's not hard. Um, I agree. I mean, I think, is there anybody that wouldn't sign that? Is there anybody that would sign it? Oh, okay. All right, good. All right, well, any other comments? I guess you're all convinced then. Um, so we're going to vote. Um, so how many people think that um, this statement is true, that we shouldn't really use medications beyond the expiration date because it's not safe or effective? Uh, really effective. Um, how many feel that it's plausible? And how many feel that it's a myth? Yay. <laughs>